Hey guys, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. This channel is not just about creativity. In fact, it's about the left side of the brain as much as it is the right side of the brain. And in order for me to develop tutorials in that world, I actually need a little bit of help. And so my brother Hunter, who's a software developer, actually created this tutorial and he'll be creating more tutorials. You'll see him on the channel. And for this one, I'm gonna hand it over to him. I'm Hunter from Pixel and Bracket. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you the Visionaire Cypher and its application in GameMaker. Before we actually get into the code in GameMaker, I want to first explain what the Visionaire Cypher really is. So what it is, is it's actually a, based off of a Caesar Cypher, which is just a shift in characters based off of a given number. So to illustrate this, let's hop over here into Photoshop and I can show you. So if we have the word like bake, you notice each one of these characters is in the alphabetic string. So if we want to do a Caesar Cypher, say with an order of three, then we're going to move each one of these characters three places. So B would become C, D, E. A would become B, C, D. K would become L, M, N. And E would become E, F, G, H. So this would be our new encrypted string. Now that's not too terribly secure. So what the Visioneer cipher is, it takes it multiple steps further. So if we look at this, what a Visioneer cipher is, is it's a base cipher off of multiple different alphabets. So we can use different alphabets based off of a repeating key and produce other encryptions. Let's say we have the word sweet lemon and we use the key potato. Now you notice potato doesn't actually fit the whole word, so we just repeat the word over again until we, we've finished all the slots for the characters. So what we're doing here is the same thing as the Caesar cipher, except our starting position, instead of it being the regular alphabet, our starting position is going to be this letter in the keyword. So if our starting position is P, we're going to move all the way over until our cross section in this matrix with S. So then P and S become H. So we have H right here. And then O with W, we look for the cross section and again, we move to W, we come down to O and that's K right there. And with T and E, we do again the cross section, we go E, move down to T and that gives us X. And across A, A is just the regular alphabet, so there's no actual movement here. So we end up with E, and so on and so forth for the rest of these. So now that we have an idea of what the Visionaire Cipher is and how to encrypt it, we're going to jump into GameMaker and see what we can do. So here I'm going to start a new GameMaker project. I call it Visionaire Cipher. I'm going to create a new script call that Visionaire Cypher. And what we know we're going to need is we're going to need an input, we're going to need a keyword, and we're also going to need a mode which is going to decide whether it's going to be encrypting or decrypting. So let's define each of those, uh, each of those values. So the input, the keyword, the mode, and we also are going to have to have an output. So assign each of those to the argument slots. and output is just an empty string for now. So some of the other things that we're going to need is we're going to have to know the input length, how long the string is for both the input and the keyword. We're also going to need to know the position at which our, our, uh, our, the character that we're, that we're evaluating is. And we're gonna need to know the input character and the key character at those positions. So we're going to have to have, have to assign each of those. We also want the output character. Now some other things that we're going to need is we're going to need the input value, which is our translation in our new alphabet after we get the key, the key character or the input character, we have to then translate it into the new alphabet. So the input value, the key value, the output value, and then we are actually using ASCII values. So what we're going to end up doing in this 
in this uh, method is we have to transition the ASCII value down to a numeric uh, a value uh, in, in the position values of our alphabet. So we're going to have the low value of the ASCII value and the high value of the ASCII value, which is our printable character span. And we also need a span to tell us the range of values between those two. So this cipher doesn't only deal with the alphabet, it also can deal with special uh, characters that you can type on your keyboard, and like a, like a ampersand or, a, or a, a, a star or or a plus sign, and lowercase and uppercase and alpha numerics as well. So let's first assign the input length, and this we just have a convenience method string length and the input and the key length same thing and we need to give the values for the low val which if we look at an ASCII table like this one we can see that the low value is in our ASCII printable characters that we can print from the keyboard is 32 and our high value would be 126. So those are the two values that we're going to use. So low value 32, high value equals 126. So now we need to know the span between those two. So the span equals the high value minus the low value and then we need to add one back in because we're losing one when we subtract those two. So now we can actually get into the for loop, looping through each character in the input string. So for, for position equals zero, position is less than the input length, and position plus plus. So now what we do inside of this. What we're going to do is we need to grab each of the characters at the given position. So this is easy. All you have to do is input uh, input input car. That's our variable that we're going to assign. Equals, and we have a, a convenience method string care at and uh, given the string and the position, and then because string care at is actually um, it expects the character position to be one based and not zero based, which means the first the first character is actually at position one instead of at position zero. And then key care, same thing. Except we noticed in our in our illustration that the that the keyword can be any number of length as big or as small as you want it to be. So it has to span the entirety of the input string. So we need to be able to wrap back around to the beginning of the keyword and use that character. Now this means that our, uh, our input string is our key and we have to then use modulus because that will allow us to get the remainder after we divide by the length. So we take the position, mod, key length, and again, what we want to do is we want to add one because it's one based. So after that, we need to get the value it is in ASCII and translated, okay? So to get those values, we need to first take the, so we, we have 32 is our bottom value and 126 is our highest value. So what we need to do is we need to take the max between 32 and our current value and we need to take the min of that value and the 126, our high value. So we do that by just doing inval equals and then the min of the max of the low val and ORD, which gets the ASCII value of our input character. 
Now, this would be high val because we're taking the min between that value that we get and the high value. So we keep our values inside of that range. And now we want to subtract the low val. So that gives us our translated position. So we end up with a number that we can then move characters by. So we do the same thing with the key care or the key val. I'm just going to copy and paste and change this to key care. So now we need a little if statement saying if the mode, if we're going to be encrypting or decrypting, else decryption. So for encryption, it's pretty simple. Our output value equals our uh, inval plus our key val. So that gives us the translation. And then we need to mod, mod the span for both of those. So I need to put that in parentheses. So we have to mod the span so that we stay inside of our given range. It'll loop back around um, to the beginning. So we mod the span and now we just add the low val back in. I'm not sure if PIMDOS would be mad at that. So we add the low val back in so that we move back to our ASCII table value. So we end up with that. And at the end, I'll just do encryption first. So at the end, then we need to grab the output character. So the output character would be, and now we have another convenience method to take the ASCII number and convert that into a character, which is just the CHR method. And that's our outval. And now we just append out plus out care. And that would be our whole encryption. Now for decryption, we need to basically do things kind of in reverse. So in this, in this scenario, what we have is we have the output value, okay? And we need to go from the output value and bring it back to the input character, okay? So to do that, it's pretty simple. The output value would be this time we use the span and we're in, and add the input value and then subtract the key value. So that gives us a movement of the inverse of what we had. So then we mod span again and we add low val back in. And I'm going to surround this in parentheses. And that's it. Then at the end, after all of this, we return the output. And that's our whole function. So if we save that and say we go into our room and go to our creation code, and now we can we can use this. So output equals visionaire cipher. And we're gonna use our example from the beginning, sweet lemon. And the keyword is potato. And the mode is one, which is encrypt. Now we have our output and I will show that in the console. And now output two is the reverse of that because we want to see we want to see it decrypt. So output is our input and potato is again our keyword and it's decrypt this time. And we're going to show, show debug message and output two. So now when we start this up, our debug window should pull up. We have sweet lemon. It translated to this encryption string and then it decrypted back to sweet lemon. So the visionaire cipher has a lot of different applications. What you can use it for and what I use it for is specifically for saving data because then it's encrypted and people won't be able to easily hack it or get into any of your inner parts of your application or your data. So that's the Visioneer Cipher. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will get to you as soon as I can. 
like this video, it helps a lot. And you guys have a good one.